Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, starting with the first lecture of the new topic which I have discussed just now, asphyxia. We'll achieve the learning objectives after this lecture that what is meant by asphyxia, what are various types of asphyxia and the term which is important from the forensic point of view that is mechanical asphyxia. We'll discuss in this lecture the physiology of asphyxia and what are various stages when this normal physiology, normal physiology is interfered with and what are various stages of asphyxia and what biochemical changes which occur when the asphyxia supervenes. So all asphyxial deaths, the term asphyxia has been derived from a Latin word, Greek word, sorry, that is, that means pulseless. A means absence or negative and asphyxia means, asphyxia means the pulse. So it results due to lack of oxygen. And this lack of oxygen may be either partial, that is hypoxia, or complete anoxia. So asphyxia by definition is, it's a condition in which the supply of oxygen to the blood and finally through blood to the tissues has been reduced below the normal physiological level by any interference with the process of respiration. So asphyxia is interference with process of respiration, which leads to deficient supply of oxygen to the blood and hence to the tissues. In forensic medicine point of view, asphyxia, which is important for us to understand that it is because of mechanical interference to the process of respiration. Interference may be at any level, but mechanical interference which leads to asphyxia is important from forensic point of view. The supply of oxygen and its utilization is the basic requirement of each cell for life. This we very much know. And anoxia can occur at any level. That starting from the environmental level, that the, there is deficient oxygen either in the environment to final utilization at the tissue or the cellular level. So any process interfering with process of respiration starting from environment till the utilization of cells is asphyxia. So three terms are commonly used, we should understand anoxia, asphyxia and hypoxia. Anoxia is complete absence of oxygen supply to the blood tissue, to the body tissues. And asphyxia is interference with the process of respiration. And hypoxia means reduced quantity of oxygen which is available to the body tissues. So the causes of this interference, either there is no oxygen in the environment or it has been replaced by irrespirable gases. That is the gases which are not 
useful for the process of respiration. The environment has been replaced by those gases like sewer gases, war gases, or there is some interference in the airways, blocked airways, mechanically blocked airways, or some diseases of the lungs which interfere with the process of respiration, or the deficient pulmonary or systemic circulation because of hemorrhage, because of anemia, the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood for circulation is, circulation is deficient. Or the red cell transport is defective. Diseases which leads to deficient transport of oxygen by the red cell, this is also responsible of reduced oxygen supply to the tissues. Then tissue poisoning, certain poisons which interfere with the process of respiration at various levels in the cells. So talking about the types of hypoxia, that they reduced oxygen supply to the body and hence to the tissues. Either it is hypoxic hypoxia. Hypoxic hypoxia means there is reduced or deficient supply of oxygen or anemic hypoxia or stagnant hypoxia or histotoxic hypoxia. These terms will, I'll explain to you. The hypoxic hypoxia means there is a reduced transfer of oxygen at the level of lungs, which means a reduced transfer from atmosphere to the lungs and from lungs to the blood. This is hypoxic hypoxia that is already in the environment, the concentration of oxygen is less, hence leading to the less transfer of oxygen from the lungs to the blood. Anemic hypoxia is where the blood is incapable of carrying oxygen for the tissues. There is deficient capacity of the blood to carry oxygen to the tissues. Either the volume of blood has been depleted by hemorrhage or the oxygen carrying capacity has been reduced due to various reasons like carbon monoxide poisoning or other diseases. The oxygen carrying capacity is reduced. Then stagnant hypoxia is there is circulatory failure due to which the oxygen cannot reach the tissues from the lungs like cardiac failures. Then histotoxic hypoxia, this is the uh, hypoxia at the cellular level. And this is important. At cellular level, either it is at the outside the membrane, at the membrane level or inside. So the histotoxic hypoxia can further be divided into four various types. Either it, it is extracellular histotoxic hypoxia, pericellular histotoxic hypoxia, substrate histotoxic hypoxia, or metabolic histotoxic hypoxia. The extracellular histotoxic, toxi, uh, histotoxic hypoxia is where the tissue enzymes of the body are poisoned and oxygen cannot enter into the cell, like cyanide poisoning, in which the cytochrome enzyme system is poisoned. And peri pericellular, the oxygen cannot enter into the cell due to decreased permeability of the cells. Like various anesthetic halothane, carbon tetrachloride, they interfere with the permeability. Hence, they lead to hypoxia. And substrate histotoxic means there is insufficient metabolites available because the process of metabolism needs oxygen, glucose, and other ingredients. If they are deficient, like hypoglycemia, the oxygen, the uh, glucose level is reduced, and hence the metabolism is interfering, and then the hypoxia will lead. Then metabolic histotoxic means the end product of the cellular metabolism or cellular respiration, they are not removed, the carbon dioxide or the 
uh, nitrates, they lead to accumulation of carbon dioxide or uremia. So this metabolic accumulation will decrease the process of metabolism, hence lead to hypoxia. Now talk, we'll talk about the physiology of fatal asphyxia. This has been determined by various tests, by various scientists on experimental animals, dogs and various other animals, and they have seen that whatever the process of asphyxia is, the physiology remains the same. The main scientists which studies are Sean and Grusser. They are studied on dogs. They induced mechanical asphyxia and uh, led to breathe carbon dioxide with various gas mixtures in various combinations. There was great variation in the survival time leading to various combination of the gases, but it was seen that pattern of cardiopulmonary physiology and biochemical changes responses were similar in all anoxic deaths. Unconsciousness occurs in about one minute and the stages of physiological change in asphyxia can be divided into three stages. So the three stages or three phases of asphyxia with altered physiology are Inspirated dyspnea. Initially, there is inspirated dyspnea means the efforts to breathe in because there is deficient oxygen and the system tries to breathe in more to overcome this asphyxia. So in the first stage is inspirated dyspnea, which means the efforts to breathe in. Then expirated dyspnea and in this convulsions also starts to occur. Expirated dyspnea means when there is accumulation of the metabolites, the carbon dioxide and other metabolites, the efforts to breathe out to get rid of these metabolites, that is called expiratory dyspnea. And then terminally, there is respiratory paralysis. That is the paralysis of the respiratory center in the brainstem. So in inspirated dyspnea, in this, the Stage, this stage is characterized by the signs of physiological reaction to the decreased oxygen saturation of the blood and it stimulates the respiratory center. And breathing becomes rapid, deep, labored, and extra muscles of breathing come into action. The blood pressure rise initially, pulse become rapid and the per person become restless, anxious, feel, feel heaviness in the head and ringing sensation in the ears. Because they also uh, uh, did these experiments on humans, so that's why they are uh, telling these uh, uh, signs. So th this study is combination of the experimental animals and the humans, so uh, you, you may say that how can the animal express his feeling. So they also did uh, experiments on the humans also. The face, hands and the fingernails, they appear blue. In expirated dyspnea, this is due to lack of oxygen on the one end. Other end, there is a retention of carbon dioxide and pooling of deoxygenated blood in the vein and capillaries lead to this phase and there are efforts to breathe out. So expiratory type of breathing starts. Breathing become more labored. There is cloudiness of consciousness. Convulsions may start and the sphincter starts relaxing. There may be passage of stool or incontinence of urine. The face and hairs, hands become congested and silosed. And there is exudation of fluid. Sometimes it may be blood stained from the mouth and the lungs. The tongue protrudes, it may be bitten between the teeth. The eyeballs become prominent, bulging, they protrude out. 
in the convulsive contraction of certain groups of muscle, that may start, which ends up in cadaveric spasm. As you know, cadaveric spasm is the last volitional activity at the time of death. Certain group of muscles, they pass into cadaveric spasm without passing into primary flaccidity. And any sudden anxious death, struggling death that can lead to this condition and the weapon, the grass, the shoot of the tree or the sand in the drowning person, they can, they can be clenched between in the hand. So that is cadaveric space. <clears throat> like drowning, the clenched hands can uh, get hold of weed, sand, or other particles which come in contact. Then finally, the respiratory paralysis. This means the paralysis of the respiratory center in the brain stem. There is complete loss of consciousness. Respiration becomes infrequent, shallow, and gasping. And it slows down till the death occurs. The blood pressure falls. The pulse become imperceptible. Muscles become flaccid and reflexes are lost, pupils become dilated, and there is terminal vomiting. There is incontinence of urine and feces. The heart may continue to beat for 10 to 15 minutes even after the respiration has ceased. So recovery from this stage is rare because now the permanent damage to the brain has occurred leading to cerebral anoxia. So recovery from this stage is not possible. Now talk about the uh, biochemical changes of fatal asphyxia. What biochemical changes appear in the blood and other body fluids? As there is a reduction of the level of oxygen in the circulation and increased level of carbon dioxide. So oxygen saturation level is reduced and rise in carbon dioxide level. There is lowering in pH and pH moves towards the acidic side. The blood sugar level rises because of the exchange of sodium and potassium ions, sodium and potassium ions across the cell membrane. They move in, the sugar come out, so there is a rise in sugar levels in the blood. This atmosphere, the environment, the homeostasis of the cell is conducive to its death because it is not possible now the cell to survive in this environment and they produce pathological changes of degenerative nature. So this was all about the uh, biochemical changes. No summary up till now, in this video lecture, we have understood what is meant by asphyxia. What are various types of asphyxia? And what is meant by mechanical asphyxia? We discussed the physiology of asphyxia and various stages when abnormal physiology occur various stages which are seen in asphyxia and what are the bio biochemical changes which appear in asphyxia. Thank you very much. Take care. Allah Hafiz.